In this video I'm going to construct a peak model that is representative of molybdenum 3D and sulfur 2S. The normal way of constructing a peak model might be to simply create a set of components with respect to a background that we choose for the data and then introduce peaks in accordance with what we believe is here. So let's first of all put in a pair of peaks that represent the molybdenum. Next I'll add another peak that I believe to be representative of sulfur 2S. And all things being equal I might then fit these data and I end up with two peaks that represent molybdenum. One I've labeled as sulfur 2S we need to change the relative sensitivity factor for that to sulfur 2s so we end up with a measure of the amount of sulfur relative to the amount of molybdenum and the question is how accurate is this peak model the peak model may be precise in the sense that the residual standard deviation is about what we'd expect somewhere close to unity the residual itself looks reasonably uniform, a little bit of uncertainty here, but this is the type of peak model that one might use to measure the relative proportions of molybdenum to sulfur. Yet this is not the end of the story, because what we must have, and must always have, is correlation of information across the photo emission spectrum. So while we have a sulfur 2S here, we also have a sulfur 2P. And this has an intensity that must relate to the intensity of the sulfur 2S. The first thing that we might do is introduce some relational constraints in the molybdenum. So we know, for example, that when we are looking at a doublet with D symmetry that the ratio of the two doublet peaks for the molybdenum 3D ought to be in the ratio 2 to 3. So if I introduce that relational constraint you can see that it has altered the residual so something changed and then if I say fit we end up with a different answer. It's not wildly different but it is different so depending on how we constrain our peak model we will get a different answer. And one of the most powerful constraints when we construct a peak model is in the line shape itself. That while we have simply assigned the same void line shape of an LA50 to all three of these components, we have not introduced any constraint that is related to the physics of the photo emission process. So the d orbitals the LA50 may be a reasonable approximation but when we're dealing with an S orbital this may well be a poor approximation to the true shape of this photo emission peak so this could be part of the reason why we have an error an accuracy error in our measurement of the sulfur and the molybdenum to assess how accurate our peak model is, I'm going to make use of the sulfur 2P. So I want to link together the sulfur 2P and the sulfur 2S in some way. Now I can't do that as it stands because a peak model depends on the information in the VAMAS block. That's where the peak model is held. It's within the VAMAS block that is represented in the right hand side. So if I've got sulfur in a different VAMAS block from the molybdenum, that's the sulfur 2P, then the peak model cannot span across these two. So to rectify that I'm going to merge these two data together and then have a peak model that will allow me to put a similar sort of constraint, if I wish, between the sulfur peaks as I have between the molybdenum peaks. So what I propose to do is to merge the molybdenum 3D and the sulfur 2P into a single VAMAS block so I can have a single peak model. 
But before I do that, I would like to just establish a peak model for my sulfur 2P. The way I'll do that is to add a background, as I did before. Let me add some average width so that the background ties the data. And I'm going to make use of this line shape from data as a way of measuring the amount of sulfur within a component. There may be more information in here that requires more peaks than a single peak to separate the different chemistry. That's very likely. But in terms of wishing to correlate the sulfur 2S with the sulfur 2P, I just need a peak within a model that fits the data that measures the amount of signal. So I can then do a normal correlation of sulfur signal between the sulfur 2S and the sulfur 2P. So there we are. I have that now. I've created a region, I've created a component, line shape because it's been taken from the data, it's going to give me the area of this peak with a reasonable certainty. So the next step that I will do is to take these two spectra and overlay these in the active tile so that I have both spectra and peak models present. Then I use the button on the toolbar that says Merge Irregular. And what this will do is it will take the tiles that are arranged in the left hand side with data overlaid or otherwise and construct irregular data, irregular VAMAS blocks, VAMAS blocks for which the step size in energy does not have to be uniform. We see a large step here, that's the irregular nature of the new file that I cannot have a regular step for these data simply because of this big step. It could also be because these are measured at different step sizes. There are many reasons why we have to make an adjustment in this way, but if I do it through this toolbar button and I arrange my two spectra with the peak models here, the new file will be created and within the new file I have both spectra within the same VAMAS block but more than that, I have one peak model has been constructed from the two peak models that were in the two separate VAMAS blocks in the previous file. So now I have my molybdenum, my sulfur 2S, and my sulfur 2P. They're now in a state where I could introduce a relational constraint between the sulfur 2P and the sulfur 2S. These data now show quite clearly that the relationship between the sulfur 2S and 2P are not what we would like. We would like the amount, the percentage, as measured by these different components. It ought to be the same between the sulfur 2S and sulfur 2P. So this clearly shows that my peak model is inaccurate if I'm going to measure the amount of molybdenum and sulfur based on this peak model. The fact that the quantification of this sulfur 2S and sulfur 2P has not produced the similar result that we'd expect, suggests that the construction of this peak model is inadequate to represent the physics. And the problem is that the LA50 is not sufficient for the sulfur 2S to allow the signal to expand in the wings of the photo emission to produce a type of signal that would be comparable to what you might see in the sulfur 2P. So I've actually chosen an interval that was compatible with an LA50 type line shape. It, it's the type of thing that n often happens, that we choose the interval to make sure that we get a good fit with the line shape that we've come up with in the first instance. But w this test has shown that, that we must alter the line shape to see if we can get a different relationship between the sulfur peaks and that will produce a different relationship between the molybdenum peaks and the sulfur peaks. So let's now make an adjustment 
on the basis of prior knowledge that the sulfur 2s is typically more Lorentzian than Gaussian. So I've just expanded the interval and expanded the the region to try and allow for more signal in the wings that I think will be associated with the sulfur 2s. So having done that I can go back and see if I can actually make a difference through fitting by adjusting the line shape rather than adjusting the relational constraints between peaks. So this is my first attempt at, at producing a more realistic relationship between the two sulfur peaks. I'm going to do that by scanning the line shape for this sulfur 2s using the test peak model button. So here we select the line shape before pressing the test peak model button and that produces a dialog window and from that I'm able to specify a range in square brackets of the parameter that will calculate different proportions of Lorentzian and Gaussian for the line shape used for the sulfur 2s. And when I press OK a new VAMAS file will be created and it will have been created from the data we see in the active tile and the peak model will then alter by the parameter for the sulfur 2s line shape. So there we go. That's what we want to do. We want to generate scans for the sulfur 2s LA using a range and say yes and then it produces a new file. A new file has a set of VAMAS blocks. These all correspond to the data that was in the original file and now the peak model is being adjusted using an experimental variable for the, the line shape that is moving between 70 and 99. So let's have a look and see what happens to the ratio of these two peaks as I adjust the, the parameter for the line shape. So you can see over here it's 43 to 50.5. So let's now just step down this list using the arrow keys on the keyboard and we get to see that the relationship here is changing as a function of the line shape parameter. And if I keep going, I'm hoping there will be a point at which we get something that looks very similar. And that would be about right. So simply by constraining the line shape and fitting the data, I'm producing a better residual. And the relationship between these peaks is becoming more consistent with what you would expect for the photo emission. So this is a line shape LA91.3. Let's have a look at how the residual standard deviation adjusted. So you can see here this is actually the residual based on the root mean square. So it's slightly different from what we see up here. That's because this is calculated from the chi-square. But let's see if the chi-square was at a minimum. So it's slightly beyond the minimum. Slightly beyond the minimum, but nevertheless it's not too far away from the minimum of that. So what we're trying to do is choose a line shape that produces a reasonable chi-square type measurement and also gives us similar results in terms of the concentration. That for me is an important thing, not to rely entirely on what the statistics tell you, you need to look at what the physics is telling you. So the physics is telling us that there is a, a reasonable relationship between these two, so this is the one I'm going to choose for my line shape and my peak model that will be used to assess the molybdenum and the sulfur 2s.